Hi folks, uh, Roach here. If you haven't seen the con video, and that's the C with the little null symbol behind it, <clears throat> I would suggest doing that first because it will actually explain a lot of uh, uh, about what I'm doing here right now uh, in, in my attempt to actually promote it. Now a good friend of mine actually said, hey, you know, the best way to actually, uh, you know, motivate or or you know provide the context for people is is to tell a little story well rather than tell a story I, I just want to relate uh, you know something biographical with respect to me and a historical uh, incident uh, of a number of incidents that happened to me that I'm sure uh, if it happened to you that uh, you would be not a little bit uncomfortable with and this is just one of the things that occurred in a long line of uh, pretty excessive abuses. Now, okay, I'm not dead, okay, but uh, that by itself is actually pretty interesting. The fact that I am still talking with you uh, in, in spite of all of what these people um, actually did to me. Now, it was, a, a, mind you, it was a great learning experience. But now I'm in a position right now where, you know, I see things that are particularly dangerous in our experience. And these things are coming to a head. And I, I don't think people really appreciate the real danger that they're in. So as a consequence, um, they're, you know, still sharing kitty pictures. And, and for them, it's all, you know, rainbows, fuzzy buddies and, and love and harmony. And they're really missing, um, you know, the bus that, that's screaming t towards them. So first, what I want to do is I want to relate this story, and I'll try to do it as quickly as possible. And second, I want to give you a little bit more context, insight, and uh, I want to amplify uh, the problems that I'm experiencing with actually just simply sharing the material, um, including, you know, some death threats uh, and, and, and the kind of obstacles that I'm hitting, which should, in your mind, uh, tell, you know, tell you that, hey, wait a minute, I might be onto something here. Um, perhaps maybe the resistance that I, I'm seeing here is that, hey, wait a minute, maybe this, this, you know the, uh, the the information related in the the con video does actually have some legs and it you know in my mind the more I think about uh, exactly how that works the more I think about I uh, think that uh, uh, hey um, this is the right approach so let me go through the uh, the story uh, and I said it you know instead of just telling you the story that uh, that I would sing it for you just kidding <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, back in late 2012, um, you know, in, in the midst of the dialogue going back and forth between me, the FBI, uh, Treasury, and, and the Texas Attorney General's office, one of the incidents that really culminated this, uh, and, and this occurred, I, I believe, in December, and, and my recollection is a little foggy, and I don't think it's really that important that you know the exact date and times, although if you do, I can, I can present the actual evidentiary documents that actually uh, show you exactly when this stuff transpired. You know, not only that, but, uh, you know, in my, in, in my videos, uh, historically, you, you can see, I, I, you know, I provided people play-by-play -play on that. So one of the things that happened that was, was particularly disturbing uh, and, you know, of course, this is, you know, uh, your government, you know, at work, was uh, in, uh, you know, certain dialogues uh, where uh, an agent of the U.S. Treasury, and, and, and she called herself Tryon. Now, I don't know if that was spelled T-R-I-O-N or if it was uh, T-R-Y space O-N, uh, Tryon, uh, but from the looks of her, uh, I think it might have been the second one because it looked like a lot of people had been trying her on. Um, you know, she was nice, but, uh, you know, hey, uh, I think she'd uh, uh, had a lot of miles on her. So she had 
called me up and you know because all I wanted is I, I wanted some questions answered and, and, and most namely I said hey look by what lawful authority do you drive your power should be pretty easy for you guys to tell me exactly what law you're you're using in order to force me into compliance okay uh, because it, it should be pretty easy for you to find I've been searching for you know uh, about 15 years uh, diligently I couldn't find it so you know and I'd ask a lot of people uh, governors uh, uh, secretaries of state uh, and, and, and attorneys uh, representatives and, and none of those people really could you know point me to the right answer now I had suspected what it is uh, and, and I kind of knew what it was but you know for them to go and say hey you need to do this um, I want to make sure that they know why and because if they knew why then they probably wouldn't have tried it in the first place Okay, so try on she uh, I'm talking with her on the phone and because I'm trying to get a resolution to this uh, and, and the fact that they wanted me to do a few things that really I wasn't in, a, in, in you know in a position to actually do in the first place because quite frankly uh, they had taken yeah, I was you know at that point I was going along just fine I was making about six thousand bucks a month I uh, had a good job and then all of a sudden uh, I get fired uh, and my wife and I uh, we're left with living on six hundred dollars a month um, you try that sometimes okay the fact that what you're seeing in the background is still here is an absolute miracle it, 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 I mean the fact that I'm actually talking to you because if they actually really did have the lawful power and the authority there'd be no reason why they wouldn't just be able to put a bullet in my head or just get rid of me or toss me in jail or you know but Perhaps I know something that they don't. Why are we even having this conversation? You know, that right there should cause people to actually take what I say a little bit more seriously. It should actually motivate them a little bit to actually do something. You know, I'm not here necessarily to help myself, although it would be nice to have ice cream once in a while or watch a new movie or have some glasses that work or get my teeth fixed so they don't uh, you know kill me so Tryon calls me up and she says hey you know um, you know the IRS uh, a agent he, he, he wants to establish a dialogue and and he wants to set up a time where we can set up a negotiation and I says wow a negotiation and I said okay Wow finally I'm thinking finally finally they're in a position to actually just sit down and just have a have a reasonable discussion and actually you know trade information and actually get to the root of, of the issue because you know in my mind I had all of the all of that they needed so that we could create an actual win-win here um, and and you know everybody gets paid everybody gets you know all the solutions are solved all they have to do is follow their own procedures I wasn't saying hey wait a minute follow the law I was saying hey just go ahead and follow your own procedures and we're all okay here you have sufficient authority to do exactly what it is that you need to solve this problem solve my problem solve your problem and everybody's okay except of course the thieves stole my labor and time fired me violated both Texas and federal law right whereby the the attorney acting attorney general at the time Greg Abbott all he had to really do was his job and he told me he wasn't gonna do it on the phone he told me he was not going to one comport himself according to the law or two, fulfill the duties of his office well he was the top law enforcement officer in Texas and this is this guy telling me he was going to do anything about a guy I can prove just simply robbed me and threw me out in the street, then slandered me, defamed me, and left me with no options. I mean, I couldn't, you know, what attorney, you know, what attorney would have taken any case? I walk up there and I say, hey, man, you know, I make 600 bucks a month. They say, well, hey, you know, hey, have a nice day. Right? So finally gonna get a negotiation right oh I, I we're gonna have a I'm gonna have a, a, a hearing on equal footing we'll be able to trade information and I can actually relate the evidence and maybe actually move you know the law enforcement apparatus forward to come to resolution 
Okay, so I show up there, and I met with uh, at least three Treasury agents and this big, huge U.S. Marshal who immediately hands me a, a, a summons to federal district court. You think about that. Okay, you have a Treasury agent in law enforcement that lies to me to serve me a lawful presentment or a summons. One, that's entrapment. How do you break the law to obey the law? You know, that's what I want to know. Okay, that act alone constitutes an abuse of office, right? An abuse of office, a, a, a total failure on her duties as a law enforcement officer, an obstruction of justice, you know, a complete fraud and misrepresentation. That's official misconduct. Not only is that official misconduct, she was in the law enforcement branch of the U.S. Treasury. She was sitting right next to uh, other FBI agents that were right there, other Treasury agents, representatives of the Round Rock Police Department, representatives of the FBI, and the U.S. Marshal Service, who all had no trouble breaking the law and violating, one, my right to due process violating my right to remedy and recourse and violating my right not to be lied to, robbed and abused. Where am I going to go? I already gone to the uh, I had already gone to Greg Abbott. There was nothing there. He sent a representative named Joe Robinson to talk to me. He asked me, "What do you want me to do?" I says, "Man, execute the order." Just do your job, man. Should be pretty clear. The law is pretty clear here that we had a violation of Texas statutes. We had a violation of Texas law. We had a violation of federal law. I mean, this is not about me following their procedures. This is about them following their procedures. They can't do that. Apparently, because it would make them criminally culpable. So who am I going to do? Am I, am I going to talk to the U.S. Marshals and say, hey, you know, uh, you guys are breaking the law? Or talk to the Treasury Enforcement Officers and say, uh, you guys are breaking the law? Or talk to FBI and say, hey, you guys are breaking the law? These are the same guys that would be investigating it. It's like going to the criminals and saying, hey, man, can I have my stuff back? They certainly didn't give me the, uh, the, the ability to go to an attorney and sue them. I tried. I mean, you know, I tried. They, you know, it was, well, you know, I'm sorry. I, you know, I really can't do anything for you now. I really don't have time, you know, quite frankly, because, you know, you don't have the cash. All right, so I took the summons of the, the negotiation. Oh, that was a laugh. I mean, the revenue officer, uh, uh, Ronald Forster, I mean, he, he didn't even talk to me. He just handed me paperwork and when I tried to say anything he says, oh, no, I don't need it. I, I don't need any of that. There's no discussion. I was just totally railroaded down this. Okay, so what do I do? I, I, I go and I say, oh, okay, well I can't. What are my options? Okay, well, you know, I thought, well, hey, you know, I got lots of friends on Facebook. I'll, I'll just do that. You know, I got, you know, I, I, I've got people on the video channel. I mean, I'll, I'll just appeal to the public. I'll, I'll just appeal to the good people of uh, Texas. And, you know, maybe I can drum up enough support. I, you know, I tried it. KXAN, the local news affiliate. Somebody got to them and told them, uh, you know, all of a sudden they wanted to meet with me, you know. And then all of a sudden, gone. Nothing. Mm, no contact. No nothing. And I couldn't even figure out, I, I couldn't even get from them why they didn't want to talk to me. You know, same thing with the local DA's office. I called them up. It's like they knew I was going to call. They all said the same thing. Get an attorney. Yeah, you try that when you're broke, huh? Do you actually think that a liberal attorney and that dominated primarily, uh, you know, a, a, you know, by people who like the expansion of government, is going to help somebody establish, reestablish the right to due process? 
Are you kidding? They make all their their money on, on, on the fact that everybody in this country is deprived of that. You get locked in this endless procedure where you're standing on, hopping on one foot, you know, touching your toes together and all this other stuff, you know, and they laugh and laugh and ha 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 and then they put you in a cage. They don't even listen to you. They don't even care what you say. You are livestock to them. And all they do is sit around and they figure out ways to manipulate, uh, you know, uh, uh, the local municipalities, uh, the local utilities, uh, the local grocery stores, uh, you know, to deprive you of the things that you need so that you have no other choice but to do what you're told. That's force. That's coercion. That's intimidation. And I tell you what. You show me any other Texan that would have tolerated that stuff without totally going off at the local fast food restaurant with their AK-47 or the AR-15. I don't think most people have that level of patience. I think if they would have been absolutely gang raped like I was in the most despicable way, I think most people would just absolutely lost it. Yeah, you know, I got people who said, oh yeah, you need to relax and be patient. I have been patient, man. You know, this is 2012, man. It's been five years of me crawling around. Oh yeah, I got a $15 an hour job. Wow, that was great. That was until my employer decided that I, I was supposed to defraud one of the customers and shut up and do what I was told. So I'm sorry, man. I, and I told him, I said, look, man, I can't do this. Especially when, hey, man, you know, if you want to generate revenue off this customer, just listen to what I do. I'll explain to you how the proper way of actually doing this. And I'm sure the customer himself would be totally on board because you take this seriously. You follow a proper procedure according to, you know, regular software development guidelines whereby you're not really actually defrauding them. You're totally upfront with the whole process instead of just beating his ass and taking his wallet. I can't be a part of that, I'm sorry. You know, so this little squirrely rat just, you know, oh, hey, I get fired. That's it. Gutless punk. Unfortunately, he's still trying to make money in my neighborhood. He needs to get out of here. I don't need criminals and worthless, lying, you know, uh, uh, spoiled brats. Bilking and abusing the people in my neighborhood. I mean, it's a total sweatshop over there. I mean, I had one of the uh, officers says that he was gonna beat the employees until they evolved. Yeah, that's a methodology there. <laughs> How'd you like to have a 20 year ca uh, career at a place like that? All right, so that's one incident, okay? That's just one. That wasn't particularly bad from my perspective. There was stuff that, that led into that. that <laughs> uh, quite frankly, uh, uh, I'm telling you. Now, you know, here I was trying to uh, trying to enlist aid from, you know, my friends and stuff. You know, when, when I went to federal district court, I mean, I, I sent them a letter. You know, I sent the judge a letter and I said, hey, man, uh, you know, again, I thought, well, hey, he's a judge. He knows the law. He knows how this stuff works. What I got is a bunch of crap out of this guy. His name was Sam Sparks. Everybody knows him. I saw one of I saw one of his rulings before. Ugh. You know, I went into court and it was just a bunch of, you know, demonic. And, and don't get me wrong, these guys were, you know, variable lifestyle folks dancing around, posing around, you know, in their tight little. Uh, suit pants in, in, in the attorney bullpen like kids they couldn't even sit still you know and I, and I walk into this and and, and, the, and, and I, I brought 12 witnesses I found 12 people uh, thanks to a, a, a wonderful lady that helped me and it was these were 12 people group they didn't quite understand what was going on and not the least of which that the public in that federal district court gets to sit about a football field away from the proceedings. How in the world can anybody actually hear what's going on? And they said, well, we couldn't hear a thing. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. They said, yeah, we saw that you disappeared. Yeah, that, that's when they actually used force. That's when they committed their crime, you know. And I had friends going back through it said, yeah, I want to see the minutes uh, uh, of the court proceedings. I said, hey, man, you're welcome to them. He says, I'm an attorney. I, I, I have no problems getting that. He comes back to me and he says, hey, man, those suckers are sealed. They wouldn't get they wouldn't even release them to me. I said, well, that's not surprising. You know, some of the things that went on there actually undermined their their whole authority. That doesn't surprise me one bit. So I went down there. As soon as I hit the door, they knew it was me. Knew me by name. Oh, you're Roger Poole. Yeah, I know Jerry Castleberry from the Round Rock Police Department. Oh, you're Roger Poole. And I said, well, hey, you know, that's that's cool. I mean, you know, it, it, it's good to be recognized. And he says, well, not in all cases. And I says, you know what? When I deal with law enforcement and they recognize me, I said, it has always, every single time, been positive for me. He sort of backed off. He, I don't know. I, maybe he thought I was going to jump over the counter at him. Well, guess what? I get a summary. It doesn't say anything. The actual minutes, minutes of a hearing, my hearing, aren't even available to me. Well, they're certainly not available to you. Do you know why they're not available to you and I? Because I'm right. And that's the problem, and, and, and it's a little bit deeper problem. Because you have to realize that, you know, hey, it wasn't Tryon. Uh, you know, it wasn't the Round Rock Police Department, it wasn't the FBI, it wasn't the U.S. Marshal Service, it wasn't even, you know, the, uh, the attorneys, you know, uh, there, there was one attorney that I, that I talked to before, before the court date after, you know, in the process of sending the letter and trying to initiate a conversation with the judge and, and, and the attorney himself. And I, I just want to talk to him beforehand. He said, no, 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 you show up and then we'll have a conversation afterwards. And I said, no, 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 I want this happening before I even show up. Because, you know, I, I knew what the trap was when you show up in court. I, you know, yeah. look, okay. So I, his, I think his name was David Nikon Smith. Now, I mean, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I have his card around here somewhere. But, uh, you know, he, he basically said, yeah, no, no, you just come down. I said, no, no, this isn't it. And he says, you know, I, I, have, I have rights here. They're all reserved. Okay, you're, you're, you're committing a crime here. I, I want you to, uh, you know, I want to help protect you from you committing a crime against me again, you know. And he says, you know, finally he gets down to the point where he says, look, right, and this is about, okay, where does the, where does the IRS get their authority to do what it is that they do? He basically said this, look, the Supreme Court has already ruled that taxes are a necessary part of civilized society. And I said, Hey, that's it right there. You got it. You hit it. Now you just proved my point. And he goes, what? I says, no, no. You said that, that taxes are a necessary part of civilized society. Civilized, meaning it's a function of a civil contract, a social contract, like I described in the Scion or in the uh, uh, Con video. It's a social contract. So you can't force a contract. You got to enter into that contract willingly. I took myself out of that contract, yet you still acted like I was in there. Civilized society. Yeah, okay, so if I was willingly participating in your quote-unquote civilized society, then yeah, I might even agree that, hey, I, I don't mind paying my fair share, whatever that is. But I don't even think the IRS even understands what a fair share is, obviously. I know I'm not the only one that's actually come up against them. I'm not sure that Wesley Snipes uh, fully appreciates, you know, what these folks did to him. I mean, not fully. Um, I'm sure he's not very pleased about it. I mean, they beat that poor man to death, you know. So, I mean, he didn't have anybody in his corner actually helping him out. He didn't realize that his attorneys weren't working for him. They were working for the people that were robbing him, you know? So, you know, quite frankly, it's this. You know, w w was it Tryon or, or was it anybody at Round Rock? Or, you know, even was it Greg Abbott? Um, was it the U uh, agents of the U.S. Marshal Service? What, you know, was it, you know, the, the rest of the U.S. Treasury? 
Was it any of those people, were any of those people actually responsible for what happened? No, no, no. They weren't, not, not a single one. Why? <laughs> They've been committing crimes for, uh, shoot, more than 100 years now. They're actually not the problem. The problem is um, all the Texans that really didn't show up to help me out. All, all, the, all the people in Facebook that just basically thought I was insane, uh, not, not worth bothering with, uh, you know, some sort of curiosity, right? Some stupid guy that, you know, um, you know is, is just not doing what he's told. And if he just do what he's told, then, then it would just, you know, be as great as it, as it is for them. Hey, folks, I was doing what I was told. Okay, back in 1999, I was doing everything. I, I mean, to the letter, I was trying my hardest to comply with their system and fulfill the responsibilities required of me for allegedly being a participant and a conscientious American citizen. And through that, I got a visit from the Secret Service, and the first thing they said to me was, due process does not apply. So the first words that I had from any agent that I actually met in person, acting on the behalf of the federal government uh, of the United States, basically told me, the Constitution doesn't apply here. Because... The right, my right to due process does not apply. Well, if I'm an American citizen and you're telling me that the, the right, my right to due process does not uh, apply, what does that mean? I mean, think about that. Uh, they're not the only ones that told me that. Uh, I had the two high-level uh, uh, agents from the U.S. Department of uh, U.S. Treasury came back and said me, told me the same thing. They said, hey, uh, the system does not provide remedy and recourse to the law and does not provide due process of law. So if you're wondering why people are getting, you know, handicapped people or any anybody, uh, mothers and, and people are being, you know, tased or beaten to death or shot on, on site for actually doing nothing, uh, that's what happens when you have no due process. Okay? So... Uh, you know, you, you, you have uh, law enforcement officers uh, in that system who have all the power to just shoot you and you don't ever get to, uh, you don't ever get to before, go before a jury. You are just executed just for being there. And you got nothing to say about it. That's why this is so important. This is why I'm so animate. Now I know I've been very hard on my friends on Facebook. But I ask yourself, who who wouldn't be if, if if you knew what was going on with me? Who wouldn't be hard on a bunch of people? Just just flooding me with little kitty pictures and little stupid jokes, distracting themselves from the fact that hey, their total life sucks because they're willingly participating in a society that's slowly draining them of life and slitting their throats and tossing them in a ditch. Now, what do I do? Do, do I, you know, do, do I just, you know, go, go ape shit and just start shooting people or, or you know, start vandalizing thing or, uh, things or, you know, uh, uh, you know, joining a mob out in the middle of the street, you know, burning police cars and, and breaking windows of athletic foot stores? Now, you can if you want, but man, hey, that's not me. I am not them. I'm something different. And even though all these people denied me of my rights, I am not the one to divide, uh, deprive them of their rights. So, you know, I, I, I've been going down Facebook asking people, hey, have you shared the video? I mean, only yesterday, I mean, the, the video had been out for a couple of days, and, you know, I you know, tried and tried to help people understand how important that was for me. Only yesterday, 
did one of my friends actually share the video on Facebook. Now, these are people that I call friends. You know, if a friend cannot help you when you really need them, are they even a friend? I, I get more respect from my enemies sometimes than I do from my friends. You know, I don't have to worry about my enemies betraying me. I don't have to worry about my enemies failing me. My enemies are always there. They're always on. They're good enemies. And I can rely on them to do everything in their power to attack me and destroy me without fail. But my friends? You can only be betrayed by your friends. Only your friends can betray you, not your enemies. So, are the people of Texas my friend? Hmm? You know, I, I, I tried to uh, drum up, you know, some support, you know, created a meeting. I said, hey, meet me out in Bledsoe Park. We can talk about this stuff in a peaceful way. We can get together and we can actually, uh, you know, make some changes. I know what the issue is. I know how to solve the problem. It's really easy. We don't have to, there's no bloodshed, no violence. Just a peaceful little discussion. That's all. So that we know what it is that we're doing here. And, and right now, we don't know what we're doing here. Oh, but we'll complain about it. Oh, we think Donald Trump's going to save us. <laughs> sure. Do you think Donald Trump has any more flexibility being who he is? Any more power being who he is than you do? They're going to stuff him in the box. And in all probability, they're going to just you know, air him out just like they did Robert Kennedy or John F. Kennedy. Anytime you go against the, the, the deep state or whatever it is, you know, hey, the last thing they want is you and I walking around here with all of our protected rights, being as free as possible within an organized society. They want a society where your livestock, where you're nothing but uh, <laughs> spare parts, it seems. You know, how much of your food is actually human beings? Do you know that? Where do all these kids go that disappear? Where do all these people go that disappear? Huh? You know? Do you think they're going to waste energy uh, uh, burning their bodies when all they have to do is grind them up? Uh, they can feed them to the animals that you eat. Or they might be feeding you, you know, that protein directly. How do you know? Do you ever take the stuff that you're eating to an independent lab if there was one? find out exactly what's in there would that independent lab actually tell you what's in there you see all these movies that hint around at that you know what is it uh, cloud atlas uh, jupiter ascending uh, soylent green uh, uh, what is the matrix right? uh, uh, what's behind this whole this whole thing of trying to get you comfortable with the concept of uh, of cannibalism Hey, all the celebrities are doing it, and you just ain't nothing unless you're eating your neighbor or your kids. And that's going on in China right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, seen some pictures. <laughs> if you guys want to tell me that's okay, I'm sorry, I'm just going to tell you no. And I'm sorry. Yeah, you can call me a hater if you want. I hate those behaviors. I hate those conclusions. I don't hate the people doing it. But I certainly hate what it is that they're doing. And I'm totally okay with that. You know why? Because that's outrage. Outrage actually is the first stage to justice sometimes. And there is no outrage here. I don't care. They can march you all in the sea. <laughs> and you'd be powered to do it. You got that kind of pride. Because I fight for my country. I fight for freedom. The freedom to be robbed, beaten, raped, and fed to your neighbors. Yeah, it's freedom, right? That's liberty. That's what soldiers are dying for, right? Hmm. They pat themselves on the back for that. Freedom. Oh, you're fighting for my freedom. Okay. <laughs> when are you going to get around to actually delivering it? 
because I don't have it here. I don't. I don't even have a camera where I can make 30 minutes of video continuously. That's where all the breaks are, the stops and starts. All right, so here it is. Okay, so here's the problem. We need to reassess what we're doing here. All of us. This is, to me, I don't know. Your results may vary. This is not the society. This is not the society that I will willingly be a part of. And no, why should I have to kill myself so that you can abuse me? Why do I have to be that guy? Why don't you be that guy? You go ahead and take a hit for the team. You go ahead and, you know, you off yourself. Oh, you starve to death for me. So you can what? You know, be a pedophile? Hmm? Rob people? Oh, but don't, don't worry. You're good. You're good. This is the beauty of the con video. It takes your consent. It says, hey, I don't agree. That's all. However, whether or not you agree, you know, everybody around you is still ignorantly agreeing because it's not conscious to them. And all I want from people that I call my friends is for them to consciously do the simplest thing is, hey, I, I've got a little plan, I get, and it's a silver bullet, man. You can look at the death threats on the video on YouTube. I mean, look at the trolls. The mindless trolls filling up the comment section, crowding out all the decent people that truly know what I'm doing here with death threats and, and the most absurd things that you could possibly put together in this idiotic consciousness stream that... that proves no point it, it is it is just abusive you know where's YouTube at these guys should not even have accounts you know they're using syllable subliminal tapes to create these you know mental constructs it's witchcraft sorcery and necromancy you know under the law they get burned to the stake that's the law you know why because they're giving power to things that are not true that's witchcraft. And why is that a danger? I'll tell you why. If I say, hey, run, there's a stampede of buffalo coming, jump off the cliff to save yourself, and you do? You jump off the cliff and you die? What did I just do? I lied, committed a fraud, but you decided you were going to act on something that was not true and give something that wasn't true real power. That power is used to kill you. Same thing here. You want to think everything's okay? Okay, you can think that. I'm not the only one suffering this. I mean, a lot of people have lost their lives. Where's the outrage there? I mean, really, where is the outrage? Oh yeah, you're out there protesting and stuff like that. You're protesting a, uh, a, a you're protesting a society that you're still willingly participating in, and you wonder why they're cracking your skulls. You gave them that power. Why? Because you consent to your to your treatment, willingly. Until you consciously, consciously, not subconsciously, know what it is that you're doing, take that seriously and say, hey, wait a minute, no, 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 no. Help me out, okay? I'm asking you, help me out. Move this. Hey, there was a guy who was sharing this video, uh, the con video in, in, in gaming forums. Hey, that's where y'all are at. Y'all are just sitting there playing video games all day in, in, in a complete alternative reality. You're not even here. You devote all your energy to a virtual world so you can conceal the fact that people are killing you right now. I mean, they're starving the Venezuelans to death right now. These people haven't had food in their grocery stores for months. 
the, it, it, it's a crisis. Oh, just one more country that's going to be starved to death, get rid of all the, the livestock that they, they perceive as useless. You know, worthless livestock like you. What good is a species that's too stupid to even save itself? Nothing to me. I ain't going to kill myself. I'm going to hang around here and watch how you end. But love, joy, and harmony to you. Maybe, may you be at peace and, and love everybody and be good and love everybody a lot over and over and over again. And then some more until they die from it. But don't worry, folks. Um, I, ain't, I ain't going anywhere yet. Um, I broke on my left. I, I know you noticed. It's just a matter of time, man. Just a matter of time. Uh, this thing's disposable. Think it's hard now? Uh, you just wait until I'm not here. Um, I'd really like to help you, but, you know, I, I really can't do that when I'm dead. There's nothing really going on that's sort of, you know, delaying that process. Um, I'm just sort of going along and starving to death slowly. Um, it's hard to put decent food uh, in, in the cupboard. This stuff's poisonous. you got to know what they're doing is deliberately poisoning you because they don't need you anymore. So, you, you better take this seriously. Uh, you know, I don't care how, how much you laugh about this and how, how much, you know, how much optimism you have. <laughs> you know, I'm optimistic. Um, I, I think everything will be great uh, when I'm dead. But right now, uh, I, I see a lot of pointless suffering that doesn't need to occur. Uh, I, I see a lack of forgiveness. Uh, and, 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 and look, I mean... Why does the method work? The method works because we're the ones doing this. It ain't some evil guys up there controlling everything. Uh, they're controlling everything because we give them permission to do that. The problem is us. We're the ones that are not paying attention here. We're the ones that are letting this happen. And we are not going to solve this problem if we don't appreciate that we're the ones that really need to be forgiven here. Oh yeah, you got the Hillary Clintons out there. But I'll tell you what, who is she? She's just an aspect of us. You better take that seriously. You know, who are the George Soros's? They're aspects of us. If we cannot find it in ourselves to show mercy and compassion, to forgive what they're doing, and I'm saying at some point we decide, okay, that's it. All right, now, no more of this stuff or we're going to crack down on you. As a majority of people saying, hey, let's reform society into something that's uh, in our best interest. But we decide, hey, okay, we'll give you, all right, what you did, you did because you two were compelled, you were forced, and you had no choice. You're forgiven. Don't do it again. We just say, okay, from this point forward, hey, we forgive it. And who are we forgiving? Ourselves. We're the ones actually responsible, not the, not the criminals. Criminals just do what criminals do. You got a society that doesn't manage their criminals, doesn't help correct their criminals. It's not the fault of the criminals, it's the fault of the society, the civilization itself. And we've become corrupt. Not them, we have. We have lost our way. The hope you have a saying, and I'm gonna end with that. We are the ones we've always been waiting for. This road, we'll talk soon.